Okay, time for the first semifinal. This one is between Alexei Cheremisinov and Maxime Poti. I'm going to play it in three, two, one, now. And let me just adjust the audio a tiny bit. Uh, also, happy Monday, by the way. I forgot my normal intro. Uh, this is a rematch, I believe, uh, between these two. I know I covered a bout of theirs probably like half a year ago at uh, Dusseldorf, the European Championships, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I believe Cheremisinov won that 15-14, to 14, if I remember correctly. And I think that was also the first time I talked about Poti. Um, so, uh, having just covered Poti in the finals, it's going to be no surprise that he will win this bout. Uh, but we'll see how he manages it. He was looking a little bit off his game against Alessio Faconi in that final. Um, but we'll see if he has a better time here, or if Shermisenov was just having an even worse time than he was. Um, I certainly would expect that Poti would have learned something about Shermisenov's fencing. I don't think they've fenced at all since then. Um, in fact, I don't know if they fenced at all aside from that bout. That might be, that may have been the first time they saw each other. Um, so I, I wouldn't expect too much in the way of like super high level mind games. This will probably be fairly straightforward. Um, Poti, as I've talked about before, is basically Garrick Meinhardt, uh, made French. He does a few of those like Jeremy Cadeau style withheld running attacks the type of thing. He likes to jump and flick the back occasionally like Garrick sometimes does. He likes a very fast and loose type of march as well. Chernysinov, uh, very typically Russian, he likes to be super, super slow right up until he isn't, and then he goes uh, super all out with his attacks. Um, kind of similar to his teammate Timur Safin, but I'd say even more relaxed on the march and even harder uh, on the finish. Um, also, I'd say his technique isn't quite at the level of Safin, but still very good. Um, he's also very experienced and very tricky. So... If anyone's going to do something unorthodox and uh, kind of mind gamey, it'd probably be Cherami Snuff here, but we'll see. Both fencers are ready, putting masks on, and here we go. I'm actually going to turn the volume back up. Ooh, okay, <laughs> right off the bat, right off the line, right and right as I look down to adjust the volume, uh, Poti scores right off the line. Here we go again. Again, attack from the right. Chermisinov on defense. Uh, maybe a little bit too relaxed there, as Poti was just able to catch him very easily. Okay, parry post that time. Ooh, was that on the sleeve? Might have been. That'd be on Poti to change his jacket if that is the case. Um, now Poti's doing the same thing he did previously. Yep, there's the uh, Kado running attack. Potential for that to not have right away if Chermisinov just goes for an advanced lunge or a lunge right off the line into it. Uh, their point in line is also an option to break it up a bit. But Poti is also being very big with the blade. He did a lot in the um, final as well. This time, not as big an issue. And <laughs> able to get 4 1 right off the bat. Um, this Cherry Mason looks for a counterattack. Now, you'd think a counterattack there would be a pretty nice idea, because if Poti's blade is so far off the target, he's not going to have a chance to uh, put it back on once the counterattack happens. They're paired post and can't hit as Poti runs past. Here comes again. All right, this is Cherry Misenov's march. Like I said before, super, super relaxed. Not a care in the world. But when he does decide to finish, it can be pretty intense. Okay. Very uh, bouncy and kind of teasing on defense there. Tries another counterattack, but no dice. Poti's blade is still out enough in front that he can hit that. And Cherry Misenov's going to switch weapons. Uh, down 1-5, absolutely a decent time to do that. Uh, especially with such a fast um, period so far. Six touches in 30 seconds is uh, no joke. It does look like Chermisnov needs a little bit more time to figure this guy out as well. Um, he's been, on defense, not really respecting the distance all that much. Poti does like to finish in super close, and he will go pretty fast to get there. Uh, kind of like Erwan Lapachu in a way, to compare him to another Frenchman. Um, Chermisov is much better at long distance, and that time, yeah, Poti's first one stopped. And able to find a turnaround. Very nice. Okay, Chermisov continues to march. Poti just lets him come. And Chermisov finishes long. That was nowhere close to Chermisov's full power finish. Uh, he does go off target on the arm as Poti gets away. And now Poti marches. And what's Chermisov going to do? He is keeping the distance a little bit wider this time, which is probably a good thing. Oh, okay. That's still attack left, okay. Chermisov's blade was pretty far out there, but able to still find a light somehow on that march. 
Oh, Jamie's now twisted. That might have actually been his if he hadn't twisted there. Um, I couldn't really see the very start of that phrase, but that's what it felt like. Again, Poti huge with the blade here. Uh, but once he finishes, he is a little bit vulnerable there, staying in distance. Tremisnov could try a really quick parry post. Although that's actually not one of his strongest actions. Okay, Tremisnov continues to march, super, super relaxed. A little bit of tempo changes there to give more space on the strip. Poti, what's he going to do? Challenges it with the blade a little bit. Still goes to the left. Okay, yeah. That did feel a little bit late by Poti. Let's see in slow motion. Yeah. Yeah, he's a little late. Just a smidge. Here we go again. Okay, Poti marching. If he goes super big again, Shirmi stuff uh, could maybe counterattack right at the start as soon as he goes super big with the blade. Oh, how do you call that one? Poti said he took it back. Um, oh no, he didn't. <laughs> he acknowledges. Okay. I did hear a blade contact there, but I'm not sure where that fell in the phrase uh, in terms of everything else. Again, Chermisnov gives him plenty of space and finds the blade this time. And now he starts relaxed. Okay, yeah. Oh, Poti tries to finish in preem. That is ambitious. Especially the distance collapsing like that. On the other hand, his blade work is so big. Like, <laughs> the blade's already moving kind of in that vicinity, and it's so far back. Like, why not go for it? It's probably the easiest way to get to the target at that point. Um see. Okay, more of the same. Chermisnov, very aggressive with his feints into this. Still getting a little bit close. And Poti still finds an off target with the finish. Okay, attempted attack right off the line by Poti, but Chermisnov parries and starts. Again, super relaxed with a few tempo changes for good measure. Poti looks like he's offering point of line. Nope, gets away. Out of space, Chermisnov finishes, though, a little out of distance. And Poti can start himself. Oh, that was it. That was very nice. So you saw Poti started super lax, and Shermisnov kind of matched him. You can see there he wasn't quite ready. And by the time Poti uh, accelerated, Shermisnov didn't have too many options left. He was kind of caught with his pants down. Although the touch happened a little bit after the, the critical moment there when he was caught. Um, that was still basically why that happened. Again, Shermisnov tries to crush and counterattack, but... That distance felt a little too wide for him. It took him a little longer to get to the target than he thought it would. Um, and that lets Poti get another pretty simple finish with this march. Is that a yellow card for delaying the bout? Because Jeremy Snuff walked back and then back to the line. This referee is not messing around. Oh, interesting. Poti tried... Um, actually, that's something that uh, Kado kind of popularized right off the line. Go super withheld, draw the attack in preparation, then fast pair post on the way in. Uh, but Chermisnov uh, hit right through the parry. And a stop hit by Poti against Chermisnov's super fast finish. That takes quite a bit of skill right there. Boop and parry. Nice. One advantage that... Oh, and I like this visualization as well. One advantage that that has. There's a stop hit. If it shows the rest of it, no, it doesn't. Oh, and it covers up the... Uh-oh. Is he okay? Okay. Okay, I couldn't tell what happened there because the slow motion covered it up. Um, but yeah, it is no joke to get a stop head against Jeremy Snuff like that. He goes super fast with that finish, even though his arm is pretty far back. Okay, keeps attacking. Might go a little slower this time just to be safe. Or maybe even faster to try to catch him. Poti's out of distance! His foot did go off the back. I don't know if the referee saw that. Nope, looks like no. Looked like his foot was over the line to me. Okay. Ooh, interesting. Final repost from the left is off target. Jeremy Snuff kind of did a second tension, like, not really attack in preparation, but just challenged the march. And then uh, to counter a post after Pochi's counter time. Not very often that you see that action, actually. Oh, no. Jeremy Snuff gets kind of caught behind his head. Not really many options there with the blade. Eventually goes off target. What's the referee saying? Oh, asking Jeremy Snuff to test, I guess. Okay. 
Here we go. Okay, Jeremy Snuff marches again. Though she scares him. Can't quite finish though. And oh, again. Jeremy Snuff got a little too close before really trying to finish there, and Poti gets a twisty counterattack. Now that's normally the type of thing I would think works better against Poti, uh, but Jeremy Snuff hasn't really been able to make that work himself. Ooh. Yep, so big search there by Poti is enough to give that to uh, Jeremy Snuff's attack. That's what I said before about um, the one drawback of that strategy. <laughs> Again, Poti went right off the line super hard there. Jeremy Snuff tried to twist a counterattack, but no dice. Yep. Poti's uh, attack stopped before um, he hit, and Jeremy Snuff did not. Kind of a half-hearted attack off line by Poti uh, compared to his usual, which is like arm right back and super fast. Again, attack left. It could have been, it did feel pretty tight to me. That may, may have been both stop, both go. Uh, Poti might, I think he's asking for a video review here. Looks like he is. So let's see if we get a slow motion. It'd be super nice. Oh, hmm. I don't know about that one. Referee upholds it. Okay, I'll trust his judgment. Again, Jeremy Snuff marches 10 seconds in the period. Still going, though. Poti escapes. Oh! It's a deceptively slow start for Jeremy Snuff. Uh, that the final couple steps there. And with four seconds on the clock, I can't imagine they'll try and keep fencing. Wow! Equalizing it at 10-10 after being down pretty much the whole period. Very nice fencing by Jeremy Snuff there at the end. Also, you could tell he was able to slow the bout way down. Poti came out very strong uh, with super quick touches in succession. But it took a little bit of time for Jeremy Snuff to figure him out. But once he did, uh, looks like pretty much uh, able to stabilize the situation here. One thing, though, is um, he did it mostly by attacking. Uh, if Poti is able to maintain the march for a uh, length of time, I have a feeling Jeremy Snuff might still be weak with these uh, counterattack ideas he's been trying. Um, the off the line situation, I think, still benefits Jeremy Snuff a lot. <laughs> this animation is a little bit goofy looking, but gets the point across, no pun intended. Um, but yeah, Poti's. Um, the main drawback of that super withheld uh, attack right off the line is uh, it's vulnerable to attack in preparation. We saw Poti once try. Uh, to turn that into a setup for counter time at super high speed, but not able to make it work. Jimmy Snuff's uh, too good for that. So if Poti can get the march, though, I think that's his main win condition. Um, either that or get fairly lucky when Jimmy Snuff attacks, uh, as he did once with a stop hit. But we shall see. Also, yellow card for Jimmy Snuff means he can't do some of his uh, occasional antics that um, he often does to trade a yellow card for touch. Two attacks right off the line. Ooh, Jeremy Snuff asks for a video this time. I think the referee originally said that was Simul. We'll see. I don't know if this has too much room for interpretation. Let's take a look at this slow motion. And hope it doesn't cover anything up. Yeah, uh, I, I can't tell that. This referee's got to be really good to parse that out. See what the call is. Yep, simultaneous. Okay, I'm not crazy. So, one video review each, I believe. Here we go. Oh, there's, like I said before, Poti turns that into a counter time right off the line. Um, very nice trick, and this time able to make it work. The previous time, I think he was going a little too fast. And Okay, that call is attack right off target because Poti fleshed off the line. Um, and Jeremy Snuff was a little bit behind him in terms of timing. But we've also seen Jeremy Snuff a few times try like a twisty counterattack right off the line because he knows Poti's going to try and crush super hard. Yep, kind of similar idea there. Oh no, it covered up the next touch and it's somehow Poti's attack. I hope we see a slow motion of this. Yeah, I do hope before uh, Tokyo that they fix this um, issue of the slow motion always covering up the next touch. That was very annoying to deal with at Rio. The referee says attack right. 
So I believe that means Jeremy Snipe is out of, yep, out of video reviews, and Poti has one left. So a little bit unfortunate position for Chermisanov. Also makes going off the line maybe a little bit riskier because you do tend to see uh, more video review requests for actions that happen right off the line than other times. So Chermisanov continues to march, super relaxed. Poti working the distance pretty well here, giving space when he needs to. Oh. Hmm, okay, Poti tries opposition of some sort with a counterattack. It can work if Tremisnov doesn't change lines, um, and if he's pretty extended with his arm. I don't know though. Feels a little risky to me. Let's see, that might be actually just be set up for something else. Poti gets to march, which is good for him. Tremisnov finds the blade though. Despite the super huge line changes that Poti does at the very end of his attack. And now Tremisnov marches again. Feels like still attack left, yep. Oh, the referee says no! Ooh, and this is where if you're Chermisnov, you wish you still had that video review. Oh, that search though by the end might have sold it. Yeah, I think so actually. So he's gonna switch weapons. Pretty good time to do that. Down thirteen ten. Hmm. Let's see. So he starts. Oh yeah, that search there. Um, did feel... Hmm. It looked like they were together, but I think the search is enough to sway that. So, um, perhaps even if he had video review, it wouldn't have worked, but not having it as an option uh, definitely hurts him. So here we go again. Tremisnov on the march again, but <laughs> hasn't been too bad for Poti so far, so I think he's fine with this. Point in line setup. Getting a little bit of distance work. Tremisnov accelerates, Poti escapes and finds the blade and starts. Now he's going super relaxed. Honestly, this tempo, I would say, probably favors Tremisnov a bit. And yet he's able to escape, although Poti keeps going. Oh, interesting try of Remise there by Tremisnov. Poti is lucky to find an off target. That is something that we haven't really seen yet from Jeremy Snob. That is kind of a, a bag of tricks action for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that call. But again, even if Jeremy Snob wanted to ask for a review, he couldn't because he's out. Uh, which, going for actions off the line, like that happens more often than any other situation, I would say. Um, so it is kind of unfortunate. Let's see. Poti on the march again. Oh, Shami Snuff missed the repost. That is unfortunate. He's going to straighten his weapon. Something to just take the uh, mental pressure off a little bit as well would be nice. Um, Poti's march has proven pretty effective so far. So Shami Snuff is clearly like trying everything at his disposal to defend it, but no. Off the line, Poti with another kind of falcon punchy sort of running attack. And Jeremy Snuff's counterattack, not able to avoid the uh, point. And there it is. Semifinal victory for Maxime Poti, getting revenge on his previous very narrow loss against him at Dusseldorf. And yeah, there it is, that last touch. So, uh, thank you very much for watching this one. Next one will be Faconi versus Garazzo, the other semifinal. So I'll do that uh, very shortly. Until then, as always, stay sharp.